Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, my name's Em, a lover of all things planning and stationery. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a very simple bullet journal setup to show you that you don't need to be super arty or super creative to make a bullet journal that is functional, but throw in a few kind of um, flourishes along the way just to add a little bit of colour if you do want something that isn't just pure black pen and maybe some pencil. I'm going to get straight into it and talk through as I go why I decided to set up this bullet journal because if you are already a subscriber of this channel you know that I absolutely adore my Hobonichis. I use a Weeks and I use a Cousin pretty much religiously but I had a bit of an itch to set up a bullet journal so I'll take you through the, the setup and kind of the whys and, and what have you as I do it. Okay, to start off, I'm going to talk about the actual notebook that I'm using. This is a lecture term, as most people use in their bullet journal, because it is kind of the, the OG bullet journal. This is a special edition I have picked up probably four or five years ago now. I pick up and put down bullet journaling as and when, so I do tend to have the same notebook for many years. Um, this is, um, yeah, this this particular one. I've had kind of the bullet journal official edition before, um, but I love yellow. Again, if you're a subscriber of this channel, you already know that. So I had to pick up this one. It does come with an index page, but I don't use it um, because, again, because I pick up and put down the bullet journal and kind of use it in different kind of, um, I guess, time periods. I tend to set up like a mini index halfway through and because I always use tabs for kind of important parts, including things like my index, um, I don't need the kind of main one at the front. These are just post-it note tabs. Um, these are my probably one of my favourites. Um, and I've just decorated them with um, stickers from my shop. I have terrible handwriting, as you will see across all of this. Remember, this is a non-arty bullet journal. Um, so I do just put little stickers to kind of give me a, a heads up about which, which pages for which. Works out most of the time. There'll be the odd occasion where I will have no idea what sticker I have that matches it and just put something random, but then I end up learning what it is anyway. Into the index. So yeah, very simple, like, like I say, this is a non-arty bullet journal, but with just a few little touches to make it feel a little less, you know, 100% pen or 100% black pen anyway. Um, so I do just do a line with a good old mild liner um, just to write the page number and then, yeah, page number and what each section is. What I'll then do is when this is filled, I'll add in um, another column. The A5 is probably a little bit too big for me I don't need something this big for bullet journaling however I do utilize the width of the page a lot so most things will be in several columns so I get the most out of it that way so because of that I mean this has got 250 pages I think it is yeah I would probably get a year out of this easy um purely because yeah I can I can fit so much onto here um so yeah I you know if I was going to do bullet journaling kind of full time maybe I'd size down and have something that I could actually make as, you know, like my EDC, my carry around, my live on my desk. It would be quite interesting to try that at some point and do like a, you know, one book July is a thing. So maybe, maybe I'll buy one and try and keep my whole life in like a A6 or pocket size bullet journal. That might be something to think about. Um, but yeah, anyway, I digress. Index, very simple. Another way that I do just add in a little bit of kind of something is with stamps. So these are some stamps that I've had for, again, years. Um, the inks are drying up and I don't have any other inks other than my card making inks. So this is what I've used here. I don't recommend this for the Let's Turn paper because there is a lot of bleed through. Um, the inks I would normally use for stamping in planners are I think they're called dewdrop inks. I'll find them and put a link of, of it in the description. Um, they're the ones that I would recommend using in any kind of planner pages just because you don't need a solvent ink pad for this. This is, you know, for my card making and things like that. Um, moving on, so this is my kind of future log year at a glance that I do um, because there's um, not all of the year I've been able to fit everything quite nicely. Again, I've kept it simple, so I don't like drawing out loads of lines. For me, that's just more opportunity for things to get smudged, things to go wrong, and for me to make mistakes because I do that a lot. So I just kind of um, pencil out the the kind of blocks. One thing actually, um, probably a good time to mention, is this that I have at the back. Again, um, a bit of a staple for people's bullet journal. It is so handy when setting up 
any kind of layout just to have something that shows the dots how how the spacing is so you just so you can quickly work out okay this is how many um squares i've got for each month or however you're you know working it out I highly recommend setting one of those up on any bullet journal that you do set up and i use that to space this out properly so i've got um, the same space for each month and then all I've done is put a line there just to demarcate these two zones because the month I didn't write at the very top I wanted to kind of have it slightly down but then I realized that that could get confusing quite quickly if suddenly things started blending so simple line there with a micron I always use the 005 just because I don't want horrible thick lines and again more opportunity for it to smudge that way so yeah really good um pen for kind of doing this kind of stuff again use the stamps and then here so the one thing that i always see with people's bullet journals and love and get jealous of are title pages it's not necessary you know if you've read the bullet journal book by Ryder carol if you're sticking you know tried and true to the method you don't need things like this but like i say i'm not artistic but i like to have just a little bit of kind of color or flourish here and there and things like washi tapes and stickers this is just a sticker from my shop perfect way of just creating a nice little kind of you know starting page i've done similar ones i think i have one here yeah so my 2021 literally bit of gold pen bit of washi done that's enough for me um so yeah i pop that in there and then what i also do is I edge the month in washi tape just so I can easily get back to it. I don't like to do uh, monthly tabs, particularly in a bullet journal that I might switch to and from every so often. I don't keep a whole year like I do, you know, in my Hobonichi weeks, for example. So just tying in the same washi tape and it's just easy to get to the month because it's the only one covered. In terms of my monthly setup, so I, I wouldn't say I'm a 100% purist on the bullet journal method. Um, there's a lot of the elements that I love about it, but when it comes to things like pre-planning, there's not as much emphasis on it um, in the kind of official method. It's very much a logging, capturing things in the moment. Obviously there's pre-planning elements, but there isn't kind of a monthly layout in the way that I do. And I need to have like, yes, the future log is, is great to kind of see at a glance, but when it gets closer to the actual month, there's more things that I will want to put in here, a bit more detail, you know, things like the F1 races, I'm not going to put in my year at a glance, but when it gets to the actual month, I want to see what weekends are F1 weekends, etc. So how I divvy it up is the right hand side of the page has the dates and then it has my plans. And the left hand side of the page has the days of the week just because it's very handy to have both and this has tasks so date specific tasks during the month this is something that i don't have the capacity for in my hobonichi weeks that's where i do most of my kind of monthly planning per se um in terms of kind of you know plans and what i'm doing and where i'm going all i have is the space for general to do's for the month I don't have somewhere where I can, you know, put on this day or in this week, I need to do this thing because there definitely is enough space. If I was using the monthly pages of my Hobonichi cousin, I'd be able to do that, not a problem. So this is kind of solving a little bit of a, a pain point for me currently. Um, so yeah, so date specific tasks here. I then have the generic tasks that just need to be done, you know, at some point in the month. But then also there's a bit around, so, you know, birthday shopping for example that's in there because Matt's away for the weekend so actually that's a really good weekend to do that because I can do it and not have to worry about him coming in and seeing what's on the PC so you know I can move things along as they as they go and as they make sense um you know things like my budget setup always do on the last day of the month things like that so I can just add those in and it just helps when setting up my weeklies um because I do do weeklies um to an extent I've just got something that I can quickly pull okay is there any specific Thing that I need to do this week and then look here and see okay is there anything else that I could do this week I then have a habit tracker so a lot of people like to have separate habit trackers and it is something that I have done in the past pretty insane habit tracker as you can see I have things quite pared down now so I just pop that in here and then my weekly habits are here I absolutely adore this spread I like having kind of a monthly dashboard I like being able to see my month at a glance, what have I got going on? How am I going? You know, all of those bits and pieces. Great, love having it there. Um, probably one of my favorite parts of this layout and something that makes me want to go back to my cousin full time for planning because I know that I would have this kind of space to plan it out. But I really like how I'm using my monthly pages currently in the cousin. So 
yeah, it's it's a bit of a struggle at the moment, kind of hence why I'm moving into the bullet journal um, at the moment. So this is my weekly spread. So similar kind of concept um, in terms of, you know, with the monthly in that I have kind of a bit of a dashboard layout almost. So um, this was my kind of quick setup for this week. As I go on, this will kind of start looking a bit better and looking a bit more ordered and there'll definitely be a bit, a bit more lists here. But to give you an overview of what, you know, how I set this out, very much similar to my week spread. If you've seen my week's videos or my layouts on Instagram, I just use a mild liner again. Again, just want to carve out some, you know, some spaces. Um, this is just events for the days, pure and simple. That's it. I then have an Alistair log. So I like to have, again, this comes back to the whole, I like to pre-plan things in my bullet journal. I don't like things just to be a constant log. I want to be able to start my week, you know, sit down on a Sunday night and write down everything that I know that I need to do that week. And some of it, there'll be specific days. So I needed to pay the council tax on Wednesday. So I put a little mark in and then I could take it off when I did it. There'll be others where I just need to do it that week. So I just add it in. And then as the week goes on, I'll decide on a day or I'll just be doing my usual day and go, okay, I've got some spare time now. Let's look and see what, what I could be cracking on with. And then I'll migrate it over. And that's kind of what, what I do and how I do it. So to set up a day, I use a little date stamp that I picked up from somewhere. God knows how long ago, because I think I've only got, I think 2024 is the last year on it. So I'm going to have to buy a new one in a couple of years. Um, but yeah, just stamp it out. Um, the day and then the first thing I do is migrate over any tasks from here that I had already marked that needed to be done that day and any events and then as the day goes on I obviously tick off anything and then add on things either as I come to them and have you know some spare time I'll move something over or they just come up and this is the main reason why I wanted to get back into bullet journaling is because I don't have anywhere in my current planning setup really for kind of ad hoc things or kind of notes and you know bits and pieces like that so in my with each cousin I absolutely love this layout and I have everything kind of set up according to function and category and things like that but if things come up you know like I want to make a note about the fact that I want it squash or, you know, a bit of information that's come up about a house purchase, things like that. I don't really kind of have the space for that. I've I've had it in the past in that similar layout in my hobby niche cousin, but with what I've got going on right now, I don't have the space in those in those weekly spreads. So I just yeah, I wanted somewhere where I could just have that train of thought just to kind of scruffily write down things in my mind, things that I needed to do. So like adding things to the inbox. So I have an inbox in my hobby niche cousin where I just kind of put on long-term to-dos or things that I'm, I know I'm not going to get to this week but things that I need to get to at some point and that's really where this has been invaluable just having this open on my desk to write things as and when again as you can see I do the the two columns approach um just because it mainly is just to-do lists and a couple of notes so I don't I don't need the whole width of the page um, and yeah, I just keep on going through and I'll move on to this page today because as you can see, I'm at the limit of today. So yeah, I'll easily get um, a week out of three pages. Then because I will want to start a week on this page to have the kind of dashboard feel again, what I'll do is leave this empty for um, a collection. So, you know, if I'm planning out another YouTube video or planning out some stickers or just doing a brain dump or anything, this is a great page for that and then I have kind of the weekly spread free it does also give me you know the opportunity if I have a super busy day or you know there's some meetings or things that I need to take notes on I've obviously got the extra space and I'm not limited so yeah this works out really well for me I I feel like it's staying very true to the bullet journal method while still allowing that kind of pre-planning element that I absolutely need in my life. Um, I need to be able to do a bit of a brain dump of to do list for the week, get it out of my brain on a Sunday, and then you know add to it as the week goes on. But just know that I know everything that needs to be done. That well, I mean there'll be things that I forget, but having an area that I can just put it all down works for me. It also means that you know because I know some people like to carve out weekly layouts and kind of set out portions. Again, that doesn't work for me because, as you can see, Monday was super busy, uh, Thursday, not so much. So 
that that wouldn't work for me i'd run out of space very quickly or some days i'd have maybe two things and yeah having having a running order like this i like the bullet journal method works for me um it's how i how i like to do bullet journaling if i was gonna carve out you know set spaces for days i'd just use one of my planners otherwise you know what's the point um so yeah that is that is it as you can see it's not neat and tidy it is scruffy i deliberately wanted to show you know a scruffy bullet journal to demonstrate that it doesn't have to be beautiful and neat i know that if you look at instagram and youtube and facebook you can see all these gorgeous bullet journals and i get jealous too um so i thought it was important to kind of show a bit of you know realism to, to bullet journals um something that i haven't talked about actually is pens so you'll see a few different pens and a few different pen widths as we've gone on i've used a combination of pens in here just while i figure out kind of the right one for me because i don't actually have my favorite gel pen anymore so my favorite kind of gel pens are either the pentel and the gels in this body or the pilot juice unfortunately i don't have black in either of these at the moment and because I'm not really using gel pens that much I haven't replaced them I've been I've been you know peak fountain pen user so this has kind of caught me off guard setting up the bullet journal so what I've been using instead is they're both um Ener gels but they just so this one's really weird despite the fact that it's 07 and in theory the same pen um the nib on this one is slightly thicker than this so or it feels like it so if i look here for example they're both written in a 07 but the black is in that one and the may is in the green version of this i much prefer this one this is just you know i've got quite large handwriting at times anyway and this just makes it worse whereas this one is what i've been using for here and it is a lot nicer in terms of it's not thick and chunky but it just my writing is scratchier with it like the pen itself isn't scratchy but yeah it just doesn't deal with my handwriting um bit of a random tangent on pens there but me and gel pens used to be really big friends um and definitely these two if you're you know wanting a good gel pen and you have writing similar to mine these two all day long i'll always recommend honorable mention to the pilot g2 as well very good pen very solid pen um yeah so that was my bullet journal um i hope that was helpful i hope you enjoyed i hope you um had a good laugh at how messy it is um it will probably continue to get messier um if you do have any questions about bullet journal setups or anything like that please drop them in the comments also if you haven't already i do really recommend reading Ryder cowell's book fantastic book very inspirational and if you are a little bit lost in bullet journaling or a bit overwhelmed by people with their pretty spreads that book is great to go back to read and kind of recenter on what bullet journaling is actually about um but yeah thank you for watching um if you haven't already please like and subscribe and hopefully i'll see you in the next video bye